from Carnegie Studios in Longmont, Colorado, it's Puppet News. Good evening. I'm Herman Hansen, and I just don't want to talk about it. And I'm Aranda Lurrer, and this is Puppet News. It's not unusual for rocks and other debris to crash through a windshield and injure a passenger or driver. But a turtle? A 71-year-old woman riding with her daughter on Florida's Interstate 95 suffered a gashed forehead Wednesday when a turtle smashed through the windshield of their car, striking her, the Daytona Beach News Journal reports. The daughter pulled over and got help from another motorist. According to a 911 recording, both were surprised by what they found. There is a turtle in there, the man can be overheard saying. A turtle, the daughter exclaimed. An actual turtle? The gash drew a lot of blood, but the woman was not seriously hurt. The turtle was likely crossing the interstate and got knocked into the air by another vehicle. I swear to God, this lady has the worst luck of anything, the daughter told the 911 operator as she tended to her injured mother. The turtle, on the other hand, had the best luck of anything. It had just a few scratches on its shell and was released back into the nearby woods, Port Orange police officer Andre Fleming said. Longmont will once again levy a $1 per hour fee at the city's five electric vehicle charging stations on August 1st, which is on par with what other communities impose, Walmart City Council members were told Tuesday night. The $1 fee is the same amount Longmont charged electric vehicle owners in 2019 until the city replaced four existing charging stations with more advanced technology, according to a city staff report. In explaining the return for the $1 fee, the city report states that as customers embrace and use the EV stations, the stations can become self-sustaining. Self-sustaining programs then free up resources to focus on additional beneficial programs supporting city initiatives. Based on the use of EV stations in 2020, reinstating a $1 per hour fee will generate about $12,000 a year. This funding covers the cost of owning and operating the existing EV stations and will allow the city to incrementally invest in additional public stations or other EV infrastructure over time. A Southern California man is recovering after he was bitten by a rattlesnake when he tried to pick up the poisonous reptile using barbecue tongs, authorities said. The man spotted the snake Saturday evening near his home in the Sycamore Creek community of Corona and was worried about it coming into contact with children, according to a statement from Riverside County Animal Services. When he tried to remove the rattler using the tongs, the snake struck and bit him on the hand, Animal Services spokesman John Welsh said. The man, who was not identified, was treated at a hospital and later released. He told me that he was feeling remarkably well, Welsh said Tuesday. He said he definitely felt that he had dodged a bullet. Rattlesnake bites are painful and in rare cases can be fatal. After the man was taken away by ambulance, a crowd gathered as Animal Services Officer Mike McGee removed the snake. Some of the children were saying, Bye, Mr. Snake, McGee said. The reptile was later euthanized. We try to release rattlesnakes within one mile of where we remove it from, but it was highly likely this snake might end up in one of the adjacent homes again, McGee said. I didn't believe a routine release would be safe this time. Officials said the number of rattlesnake sightings has gone up as the weather has gotten hotter in the area about 50 miles southeast of downtown Los Angeles. Welsh advised residents who spot a snake to call animal services instead of trying to remove it themselves. And especially with barbecue tongs. <clears throat> Alex White, 
thought he was watching a huge worm writhing in plastic-wrapped lettuce he'd just brought home from a Sydney, Australia supermarket, until a snake tongue flicked. Well, I kind of completely freaked out when I saw this little tongue come out of its mouth and start flicking around and realized it was a snake because worms don't have tongues, White said on Thursday. I definitely kind of panicked a bit, he added. It was a venomous, pale-headed snake that authorities say made an 870 kilometer, that's 540 miles for you American speakers, journey to Sydney from a packing plant in the Australian Sydney of Toowoomba, wrapped in plastic with two heads of cost lettuce. That's two heads of lettuce, not a two-headed snake or <clears throat> Aussie. That would be nightmarish. The refrigerated supermarket supply chain likely lulled the cold-blooded juvenile into a stupor until White bought the lettuce at an ALDI supermarket on Monday evening and rode his bicycle home with salad and snake in his backpack. White and his partner Amelia Neate spotted the snake moving as soon as the lettuce was unpacked onto the kitchen table. They also noticed the plastic wrapping was torn and that the snake could escape, so they quickly stuffed the reptile with the lettuce into a plastic food storage container. White phoned the Wires Rescue Organization and a snake handler took the snake away that night. Before the handler arrived, White said Wires had explained to him if you get beaten, you've got to go to hospital, like, really quickly. Aldi is investigating how a snake could have found its way into a supermarket. We have worked closely with the customer and the team at Wiles to identify the snake's natural habitat, which is certainly not an Aldi store, the German-based supermarket chain said in a statement. Wire's reptile coordinator, Gary Pattinson, said the snake was less than 20 centimeters, that's eight inches for your American speakers. Long, it was as venomous as it ever will be. Pattinson is caring for the snake until it is returned to Queensland State next week, following the wire's policy of returning rescued wildlife to where it comes from. It's the first snake we've ever had in sealed packed produce, Pattinson said. We get frogs in them all the time. Nayati, a German immigrant said her brush with the venomous snake in a Sydney kitchen was a setback in her efforts to assure relatives in Europe that Australia's notoriously deadly outback wildlife was nothing to worry about. For the last 10 years or so, I've taught my family at home that Australia's a really safe country, Neade said. I've always said I'm just in the city. It's totally fine here, she added. Movie lovers will once again be able to see the latest blockbusters on the big screen at the Regal Cinemas at Longmont's Village at the Peaks beginning May 7th. The national theater chain suspended operations nationwide in October 2020 amidst concern about the spread of COVID-19. The theater has instituted safety precautions to prevent the spread of the virus in the theater. These precautions are part of the Cinema Safe program that was commissioned by the National Association of Theater Owners in August 2020. Guests of the theater will be required to wear appropriate face coverings while inside the theater unless eating or drinking while seated inside the auditorium. Regal encourages moviegoers to purchase their tickets via Regal mobile app and have additional functionality to allow patrons to order concessions via mobile app to reduce contact between guests and employees. An upstate New York couple may have finally solved the mystery of who's been tossing used coffee cups in their front yard for nearly three years. Edward and Cheryl Patton told the Buffalo News they tried mounting a camera in a tree in front of their home in Lakeview to catch the phantom litterer. But it wasn't until some neighbors got involved recently and followed a minivan and jotted down its license plate number that there was a break in the case. After Edward Patton called police, they waited and pulled over a vehicle driven by a 76-year-old Larry Pope, who Cheryl Patton said had once worked with her and had had disagreements with her over union issues. Pope was charged with harassment and ticketed for throwing refuse onto a roadway. 
I found it very hard to believe that someone I knew would do something like that, especially at his age, Cheryl Patton told the news. The Patton said littering has stopped since Pope was pulled over. A message was left at a phone number listed for Pope on Sunday. A Canadian Parliament member was caught stark naked in a virtual meeting of the House of Commons. William Amos, who has represented the Quebec District of Pontiac since 2015, appeared on the screens of his fellow lawmakers completely naked Wednesday. The pandemic has meant many Canadian lawmakers participate in sessions via video conference instead of in person. A screenshot obtained by the Canadian press shows Amos standing behind a desk between the Quebec and Canadian flags, his private parts hidden by what appears to be a mobile phone in one hand. This was an unfortunate error, Amos said in a statement sent by email. My video was accidentally turned on as I was changing into my work clothes after going for a jog. I sincerely apologize to my colleagues in the House of Commons for this unintentional distraction. Obviously, it was an honest mistake and it won't happen again. Claude de Belfouy, a legislator for the opposition Bloc Québécois party, raised the incident in a point of order after a question period, suggesting that parliamentary decorum requires male parliament members to wear a jacket and a tie, and a shirt, underwear, and trousers. Speaker Anthony Rhoda later thanked de Belfouy for her observations and clarified that while he had not seen anything, he checked with technicians and confirmed that they saw something. He reminded lawmakers to always be vigilant when they are near a camera and a microphone. Amos, the parliamentary secretary to industry minister Francois-Philippe Champagne, was visible only to parliament members and staffers on an internal video conference feed. Because he was not speaking, his image did not show up on the public feed. Liberal Party colleague Mark Holland said Amos was utterly mortified. Holland said he was satisfied with the explanation from his colleague. I don't think there was any ill intent. It's certainly an unfortunate circumstance, Holland said. This is a warning to everybody, Holland added. You've got to really always assume that camera is on and be very careful any time you wander anywhere near that camera that you're dressed appropriately. Asked if he will be issuing a warning to all liberal lawmakers to that effect, Holland said, Oh, big time. <laughs> Breast cancer patients in the Lamont area now have access to cutting-edge technology that could cut off serious post-surgery complications. At the Rocky Mountain Cancer Centers, located at 2030 Mountain View Avenue, Dr. Jolinde Tynan uses the Sozo device to treat lymphedema in breast cancer patients. Lymphedema is swelling caused by fluid building up in the lymphatic system, Dr. Tynan said. Many breast cancer treatments, whether surgery or radiation, disrupt the lymph nodes. A side effect of disrupting the lymph nodes is the fluids, which remove fluid through the lymphatic system, build up in the limbs, causing swelling. In addition to swelling, the buildup of fluids increases the patient's risk of infection. The machine detects fluid that would build up in a body before a physician or a physical therapist could detect it. It catches it at a stage that is readily reversible, Dr. Tynan said. It prevents lymphedema from occurring. Vermont's largest city is banning the use of loud, gas-powered leaf blowers. The city council passed a phased-in ban this week, the Burlington Free Press reported. It mandates moving to quieter, electric-powered leaf blowers, which will be required for all municipal departments in August. All businesses and Burlington residents will be required to comply by the end of May 2022. Gas-powered blowers operate at 90 decibel, which can cause hearing damage after two hours of exposure, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And gas engines contribute to air pollution in residential neighborhoods. The ordinance restricts the noise of electric leaf blowers to 65 decibel, which, according to the CDC, is about as loud as a typical washing machine, the newspaper reported. The restrictions for businesses or landowners that service 10 or more city properties go into effect on September 6. The rules take effect on December 31 for smaller businesses.
The 2020-2021 school year has been full of change, stress, and anxiety. The Lamont Community Foundation will reward 25 SVBSD preschool through third grade teachers with a cash award. The catch? Teachers are required to spend the money to rejuvenate themselves. The Lamont Community Foundation and Alchemy Fund are accepting nominations for teachers in grades preschool through third grade for the Rejuvenation Award. A committee of community volunteers will review the application, selecting 25 teachers to receive a $1,000 cash award. The teachers must agree to use the money for personal use and not buy supplies for the classroom applications, and a short video explaining why the teacher deserves the award are due by midnight, April 30th. Recipients will be... And that's all we have time for. For Puppet News, I'm... And I'm Aranda Lurrer. Good night.